welcome to Awake TV. So today, soon and I gonna talk about what do you do when you find out some huge truth which have been hidden from you for a long time, and then you found out. And a lot of people might feel stupid or going to the denial. But we do want to talk about this ahead of the time because time is coming. And this is a very important topic. How do, how do you deal with your anger? You know, when you find out something, something you thought your reality is completely, you know, shenanigan. Was so, a lie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, I personally had the experience, not in more like a truth or political kind of world, but in the relationship field. So I can kind of, um, without going into too much details, I do understand how people would feel. You must feel like you're full. How did you believe in the lie you are presenting with uh, pretty looking pictures? And then you believed them because you wanted to believe a good in person or you wanted to believe the light side of the fairy tale, right? A lot of people don't want to believe in the dark side, like how some human being can be capable of doing such an evil thing. Because when you look at other people, you look at other people based on your, your world based on the kind of people you deal with. So you, you can't really imagine there's uh, some people out there who can be so dark, so shady, and so self-centered. So how do you, we deal with this when you find out stuff like that? So uh, that's what we wanted to talk about. So Sue, so what is your point of view on this? What you said a minute ago is, I think, a great starting point, which is realizing that we may have missed all uh, most of what's coming as revelation um, because we are higher consciousness beings, the ones that missed it. You know, um, we we don't want to see the darkness in other people um when you hold a light within you when you value the light and um i think that's also why especially in relationships or jobs a boss uh somebody in your life has really manipulated you and fooled you and pulled the wool over your eyes i think the reason that that happens to so many people is because they're light and they they don't want to imagine um yeah. Or they can't relate to it. Like you said, you, you just, I mean, you said it so well. It's just, we just can't imagine that people can behave in this way because that's not our point of origin at all. And it isn't our focal point or where we would operate from as, as our beingness, our essential being. Um, you know, we can change bad habits and, and, and there are a lot of light beings, uh, people that live and walk in the light that have bad habits. And that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about deep, dark, down and dirty deeds that have been perpetrated on other people or a society. And um, well, whole this is what we can't relate to. Yeah, or whole structure we thought this is the fair for everyone is made for only handful of people small small amount of people and then you know i think the thing that helps me it's is that there's so many people and so many generations i mean we're talking thousands of years this has been going on so um you know of course most of us grow up trusting our parents and what our parents knew and then our parents trusted their parents and so on and so forth generationally because um, we've all been brought up to understand that there's wisdom with age. And um, so we trusted them on a lot of things. And these systems that we were taught to believe in, they believed in too. 
and they were fooled as well. And the generation before them, they were fooled as well. They just had no inkling um, of what is coming to be revealed that was was even possible uh, or could be going on. And, and how could it go on on a global scale? And um, so in a way, it helps me to think, you know, I'm not alone in this. And that's what takes away the stupid factor. Like, I don't consider myself self stupid for being fooled because everybody else was too. So, you know, it must have been a pretty good scam. And, um, you know, just putting it in simple terms, right? Yes, um, all the scam because it's very effective, right? Yeah. And then it's very difficult to find out whatever the stuff is going on behind the curtain is. Uh, shady unless you go through spiritual awakening and then we only went through spiritual awakening maybe you know except a few of those people majority of us went through spiritual awakening like 2012 around, around that time more or less right so yeah. until then we are all in sleep well and then you think about the control mechanisms you know so let's just think about that for a second who do you know that are like you and me that don't have some special clearance or some special title working in the agent that can even touch the government? You just can't. You can write letters, you can complain to your representatives, you can do all this stuff, and they're basically going to send you some bullshit letter and tell you this is what we have for you. And it's something that yeah, doesn't even answer your question, you know? Um, the very little experience I have with writing letters to representatives, they send you some canned response. So, you know, what I'm talking about is access. How many average people have access to find out these things? If it wasn't for the whistleblowers of the world, um, you know, corporate whistleblowers, government whistleblowers, um, who's that guy that did WikiLeaks? You know who I'm talking about. Yeah, uh, Julian Assange. Julian Assange. If if it wasn't for the whistleblowers of the world, most of us would still be in the dark about it. We could have a spiritual, even a channeling, even a psychic awareness of things. But like, what are you supposed to do about it? Nobody else knows about it. They're just going to slap a label on you, call you crazy and give you some pills, tell you to go sleep on your cot. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, some people made an organization international tribunal of justice that is you know without going too much detail on it because of the youtube thing um that's how i delve into this journey personally so i started looking at the truth extremely dark side and then my point of view of looking at this was regular people are very suck at acting because i was looking looking at the you know people come to the audition so unless people are, who are highly trained to act well, be a good actor, regular people cannot fake the emotion, like crying and all that kind of thing. Like you can always tell they are faking. So when you go through the um, judicial system and the tes testimony and when people are crying and going through all of ordeals, I was saying things saying to myself this must be true because regular people suck at acting and the funny artists. thing is people who are expert manipulators sociopaths uh narcissists you know these are the group we're talking about that have perpetrated these lies all these years um they're expert actors and it's it's because they lack emotion that they have to make up for it by observing real emotion and then acting it so well that it's believable i mean you could be working the percentages are pretty high there's a lot of sociopaths walking out uh, walking around out there why do we not know who they are because they're so good at acting and um most of them are harmless you know they i mean you wouldn't want to be in a relationship with them because um they don't care about you and and that behave those behaviors will eventually become apparent but what i'm saying is most of them aren't dangerous to society they're not you know master thieves and and all of that but um they are they're very good at acting and so that's why a lot of people were fooled um a, a lot of people don't understand that's that people that do lack empathy become very good at pretending and um <laughs> i've been fooled 
you've been fooled. I don't know anybody that hasn't had somebody in their life, you know, people that are good hearted and kind that haven't been taken advantage in some way or another by these kind of people. It's usually on a smaller scale um, than what we're talking about because we're talking about global manipulation and uh, every, every society. It isn't just the United States uh, by far. But um, so how do we deal? When the information starts coming out, how do we deal with our anger, our cognitive dissonance, our disappointment, our sadness, our denial? all that kind of stuff. What do you got for us? Well, a lot of times when I'm observing like people around me, you know, when in the beginning, just like a lot of people did, I tried to provide information, right? Whatever the information I know from my um, professional experience or, you know, professional knowledge, I try to provide a, accurate information. I don't delve into about what. And then people usually get into denial because, you know, that is not the uh, same as uh, same information as provided from authoritarian figure, <laughs> you know? So mm -hmm. um, I'm like, I stopped providing any information because I feel like, okay, it's a waste of my breath. And then what's the point? Because mm -hmm. if they want to know about the information, they're going to either look for it on their own or ask other people, do you know anything about this? Mm -hmm. So usually people go automatically into like a cognitive, you know, um, dissonance. Dis dissonance, like denial, because I, my observation was they don't want to feel stupid, especially someone who is uh, highly educated. They don't right. want out of their pride or ego, they don't want to admit like, okay, um, I wasn't smart enough to see this. Mm -hmm. So they, they completely deny. Right. You know? So that's a lot of uh, educated people might react. And I feel like that is a um, normal reaction. Because nobody gonna feel like want to be fooled, and then you kind of like come to the conclusion that's what happened. Of course, first thing you want to say is you want to deny, like you know. Well, you know what we're seeing, what we're what we know is coming is that the truth is going to come out in bigger and bigger chunks, and it's going to become more and more, or less and less, deniable. And, um, you know, so the definition of co cognitive dissonance, in my understanding, is that, like, you've got this 100% proof in front of you, but it's so in discord with everything you believe that you just can't grab onto it. Um, it it's, it's like you were talking earlier about uh, how you just can't believe that people could do this sort of thing, right? You, it just It just almost snaps your reality because like here it is here's the proof and we've given it to you in so many examples that you can't really deny it anymore but you can't wrap your mind around it and so um in my own life when i have and i've had those moments of cognitive dissonance um i i just have to and this is what i suggest we do for other people especially when we're working with people and and they're having this going on is um i just try to have a lot of compassion and just say yeah you know and if you do need to be in denial about it for a while then that's fine um yeah. you know do practice self-care but then as the emotion you know once your mind just kind of goes okay i'm safe and it's safe and everything's okay and things are being taken care of and okay i'm starting to feel safe again so now the feelings are coming like we talked about last week you got to let those feelings come mm -hmm. and um you know i suggest if you if you really need to get some anger and rage out you know pick a nice soft surface that's uh, not going to be destructive of somebody else's property um or get some exercise, uh, go to a gym, take up boxing, whatever, yeah, some, whatever. some nice, mm -hmm. some nice healthy outlet for, um, discharging that anger. I mean, exercise is really good for us as a medium for releasing, uh, especially anger, but, um, sadness, uh, all kinds of things. But then, um, 
I personally had gone through when I was waking up um, a lot of wanting revenge, wanting to see them burn. Why, you know, what at the very least wanting to see them go to jail, get caught, have the truth come out, have people really know what was happening. And I've shifted over the years um, to a different point of view where I just try to hold compassion. Um, and what that means to me is that we're all at our own individual levels of consciousness. Um, and though we may have group consciousness, we may have a collective consciousness um, in different grades and levels, uh, not judging any level better than the other, but um, that's the point. We can't judge the level that other people are at in their consciousness because where, where, why ever their soul came here and um, and only brought that little bit of consciousness with them, they wanted to have an experience. And yeah, it's been at the um, detriment of others. But the thing that keeps me going without and allows me to have compassion is the others that they've affected, they also signed up for the experience. Why? I don't know. Um, especially some of the horrible stuff that we're going to be hearing about that's going to come out into the open. Um, why would a soul, I mean, that's the question that is asked to me most from people that I work with. Why would a soul choose that? You know what? I don't know. But all I can say is we've probably all done it. We've probably all been a victim. We've probably all been a perpetrator in some incarnation, whether it be on earth or it be somewhere else. Um, and I th think the best answer I've ever come up with is that because it's the exploration of separation. We, we need to explore the dark, what we consider the dark and the light, the, um, what do you call that? Not separation, uh, duality. Um, because in the end, we're all uh, aspects of source. So um, why would aspects of source go out and uh, be dark? Well, because we didn't know what it was like until we actually did it. And then we went, oh, I don't like that. I'm not going to do that anymore. But it could have taken many, many, many incarnations for each one of us to get to that point where now we're more light than anything because we chose it. Um, that doesn't mean we were never dark. So for me, compassion means that understanding of I know at some point in my incarnating um, experiences, I was also dark. <laughs> And I don't like to think about how dark I could have been. I've had some revelation about it through hypnosis, um, which was quite enough. Thank you very much. Hard to swallow. But I, I went, okay, there you go. So I've done some dark things too. That was not in this lifetime. And obviously, I've come to a point where I've evolved to um, remembering again who I am as, as source energy to where I would never do that again. Um, if we're all doing that, then it's awfully hard to want to take retribution against a soul that's doing that now. Um, yes, we need to get them out of society and protect society from them. There's no doubt about that. I'm not saying let them walk freely amongst us and keep doing what they're doing. No, I'm not saying that at all. But what I'm saying is having the compassion and understanding that, um, just for the fact that we signed up for an earth incarnation or many, we've been exploring the dark and the light too. And, you know, none of us are free of having done dark things. I don't think that's my personal belief. What do you think about that? Well, um, talking about my perspective, not going to be help because I have a galactic perspective. So let's bring down to everybody's level and then. This is what I suggest for everyone. Uh, when you find out all this thing, you feel like you don't want to believe, take as much as time as possible until you calm down. Doesn't matter how long, this is not a competition. And then world around you are providing you the information. So when time comes, you kind of have to admit, okay, I guess this is the truth. As much as I don't want to admit it, this is this is it. So most important thing is have compassion to yourself. So don't feel judgmental to yourself and don't listen to a voice in your head to say how stupid you are to believe in 
what media said, yada, 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 or, 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 or whatever, right? Don't, don't criticize you because you are not the only person. There are so many people who, who believed in the illusion. So this is normal. So when you come to the certain calmness of like state of mind, you can admit whatever the stuff now your heart is the truth. That's a one step. Then after you come to this point, you're no longer in denial. Then you started to feel really, really angry at the, what, what is happening. And then you feel like you want to do something about it. Okay, I got it. But just like you said, like release your anger in a healthy way because going to have a revenge in individual basis doesn't solve anything. You have to really think like logically, right? We, we all want the same thing. We want a peaceful world. We want an abundance for all. Uh, we want to have uh, clean water. We want to have healthy food. And we want to have a happy, meaningful, fulfilling life. So th that is something we all want, regardless of race, regardless of religion, regardless of class, regardless of whatever. So majority of, majority of us want this. So going to have a revenge on these people and your job, it was never your job. So let authority, I'm not talking about authority like politician, you know, the uh, justice system or whatever, by then they're gonna be start functioning normal because they are always, always good people in every organization. It might be 10%, it might be 5%, but by then more than 5% of people are gonna be major force to, you know, do their, their side of job. You mean, when you say by then, you mean once the information comes out, that's yeah. irrefutable. Yeah. yeah. So it's not, yeah. Your, it's not your job as a civilian to do something like have a justice on your gun or on your knife. That's not your job because you don't want to have this kind of, you know, we, we don't live in all the time. We live in civilized society. So... The most important thing is how can you do it differently? Do not repeat the same mistake for the next time. How can you do it differently? So when you start thinking about it, how could you react? How could you have a discernment a different next time differently? They, they won't be next time, but the whole point is it's a good idea every single one of us to think about this. How can you do it differently? Mm -hmm. And then you learn the lesson. Then you, you get some kind of wisdom. Okay, I could have done this differently, that differently. So you feel better about yourself, right? Even though you, you haven't done it, but now you know the solution within yourself. So you have a confidence within you. Okay, you're not gonna get fooled again. And that, that's where we can all reach, like at the minimum Sounds level. like you're talking about like the transition from an unknowing victim status. Okay, I just didn't know. Now that I know, now I need to step into personal power, yeah. which means instead of just going with what everybody's telling me to do I got to feel into it and I've got to say ah they're telling me to do this but that doesn't feel right so I'm not going to do that you know making personal decisions being responsible for your health your uh your governance um really finding out who is running for this position not just listening to some anecdotal whatever on a commercial and going, oh yeah, that guy sounds good. Or this is the party I'm in. So I'm voting on party lines or, you know, so I think it's just what you're talking about by when you say learning from the experience, you're talking about becoming more aware and also in tune with your own internal guidance. 
versus yeah, because listening. It's more individual instead of relying on other people to think for you. Yeah, any organization to think for you, any anything to tell you what to do. You have a brain. Yeah. So start using it. You know? Yep. yep. <laughs> and and setting boundaries too. I mean, I think the key to getting out of um, victim status to moving into personal power is setting boundaries. Yeah, setting and boundaries. And the voicing, I, no. When you, when, she, see, you have to understand that, like, when you say no, other people start saying no too. You're not going to be the only one who is saying no. Because when you feel fear, and then you say, if I say no, I'm going to get into trouble. If everybody say, think that way, nobody going to say no. But I remember the first time I, when I was still, we were still in New York. I was still in New York. And um, the mask mandate for all the, all the uh, grocery stores had just been lifted where it was like, oh, well, we suggest this, but you don't have to wear it. And I wa walked into the store. Oh, I think I was with Brent we both walked in together and neither one of us had a mask on and people were just like turning all the way around and doing a double take. And, um, I didn't see it, but Brent told me that, uh, this one kid was watching me when I first walked in. I mean, really watching me. And after a couple of minutes, he took his mask and he brought it down under his nose and his friend went, you know, did sort of a double take <laughs> And I, we were laughing all the way home in the car because I was like, are we the only one that got the news briefing on this, that it's not mandatory anymore? Um, what's going on? Have people just fallen asleep and, and they stopped checking to see like, when can you breathe again? I don't know. It just kind of blew my mind. But it, that story about the guy taking his mask down really kind of got me when he told me it happened I said he says did you see that and I said no I didn't see it and um he goes well he was a young kid you know when we say young kid we mean in 20s right and I said well that's good then you know if if we had some kind of influence on other people then that's awesome um yeah I was watching but, TikTok um the other day and then I this guy was making video like uh girl gets into the train and then um cross with a guy guys try to get off the train and then they fall in love so they are showing okay. each other's phone and then somehow i don't know how it works but they they exchange the information in one second without like a putting phone number i thought that was romantic but whole point of that i was looking at the comment in tiktok and then people are saying, oh, this never happened in New York. This never happened in New York. Like, oh, people are not going to socialize. What about, what about, you can't even see the face nowadays. So I was reading all this comment. And then I left my comment to say, this happens. This happened to me. And this happened to my other friends. People do meet in subway. People do meet in subway station. If guy has a balls to talk to you, and ask your number, this happens in New York. So some people are adamant about this never happens, right? So like stuff like this is like, sometimes people don't see the possibility of the other side because they are so, what you gonna call it? Entrained in their own behavior or belief system. Yeah, glued into like a never happens, really never. Because They've convinced I, themselves. I know so many people, like, uh, there are guys that are talking to my girlfriends, like, in Subway, like, when they're waiting, and I ask their phone number. That's how I know so many people, like, you know, you or just... Or the grocery be, store. Yeah, you or just the bookstore. You just have to be approachable. Yeah. You know? And you have to believe that it's possible. I mean, if yeah, you yeah, decide yeah. in your mind that it's impossible... That means you've just now put a, a wall around yourself. You've closed yourself off to it as being possible. And so in essence, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy because you've decided it is impossible. Mm -hmm. Well, 
what kind of um, armor are you walking around with? I mean, if you would never dream of talking to somebody that you've never met before on a subway or in a grocery store or wherever, then, uh, yep, thanks. Um, chances are, oh, put the light on for yourself. Chances are it's not going to happen because you've already convinced yourself it won't. Yeah, and that's they are creators. You, that's how you created the reality. Like, oh, this never gonna happen. And a lot of people wrote the comment about it's New York. Nobody interact with each other. That is not true, because when I'm in the subway, a lot of guys came up to me and say how pretty I am. Or, Excuse me, I just wanted to express my feelings, and they are not like you know pouring their heart to me or anything. So I know that interaction happens, right? Yeah, like personally, yeah. people do interact like all the time. You just have to be approachable. Like you cannot like glue yourself to the phone so they cannot come up and talk to you or anything. You you have to be approachable, right? You yeah. Have to, you have to make eye contact or, you know, you, you just have to like feel like, okay, you can talk to this person, right? Well, I mean, everybody's heard of an aura, right? And what is an aura really? It is our energy field that extends outside of the parameters of our body. That's it. Everything's energy, emotion, life. Life is energy. And, um, you know, if your energy is spiky, uh, it's, it's, it's the doors closed, cold, uh, unapproachable, people feel that. People, uh, there are some people, they could just look at you and tell whether you're approachable or not. So, you know, again, um, this is all personal choice. Getting back to the idea of how we um, deal with emotions. I, I just want to say this one more thing about um, wanting revenge, because I think a lot of people want revenge. They want their pound of flesh and their justice, um, especially when they find out, you know, the extent of how bad things got. Um, I just can say, I feel that much better if I stay in compassion than if I stay, if I'm in a revenge. And I used to feel that desire for revenge. Trust me. Um, there's a couple politicians I can name right now that I won't, <laughs> um, that I really wanted to see go down and I wanted to see them go down in the worst way. And I just don't feel like that anymore. And guess what? I feel better. I actually feel so much better. It's 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 a lot of work and energy going into being angry and hating somebody or wanting yeah. revenge. It, it really is a lot of energy. And I could use that energy on so many better things, especially things that are going to make my life better. Um, so it's a choice you all have to make. Um, yeah, that's do a your good feelings, point. you know, do, do your feelings. Like Erica said, like I was talking about, um, but then, you know, there comes a choice for everybody, which is, you know, when are you going too far or what is your focus? Because what we focus on, we bring to us. So if we're constantly in a state of wanting revenge, we're going to see more things in our reality that we're going to be more angry about because it's just going to keep, it's going to be like a weird record that keeps playing over and over and over again. And where's the end of that? That's not going into um, a utopia or the higher states of consciousness where we want to be that's not ascending we want to live in a world that we're creating which is is beautiful like you said earlier everybody wants the same thing we want to have clean water clean food um a good shelter the ability to have a family if we want it the ability to have a, a career of our choice um that we're not going to build that dream on revenge um uh, on ingrid anger and hatred uh, our creativity goes right in the toilet when we focus on those emotions um so you know go ahead and feel it but don't unpack your bags and stay there because yeah. you're not going to build the kind of life that you're hoping to build yeah after you release those angers that is a time to use your mind right use your mind to say how could we restructure the world to make it better for all that's how you channel your anger yeah, and then just do it. I mean, whatever you come up with, whatever action you can take to make your life better, then do that. And for me, it just means I treat everybody the way I want to be treated. Even if somebody's in my face about something, you know, I 
I was not the kind of person that would walk away from a conflict back in the day. I, I just, I can't do it now. I cannot stand conflict. I don't want to argue with people. Um, and, I, and I pretty much know how my circle uh, feels about things. If, uh, you know, if I've got friends or family or, you know, people close to me that, uh, you know, certain topics or hot topics, I, we just don't talk about them. Yeah, that's a good idea. I mean, and I just be know. respectful. Yeah, because you see, like, if the other person cannot even respect to talk about it in the peaceful manner, I mean, what's the point of talking about it, right? Discussion means discussion to exchange different point of view, different information to discuss, not to yell at each other, right? Or try to convince other people to change the other person's mind to, like, convert, right? Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, like agree to disagree is a way of um, peaceful way to talk to other people. And then like, you know, I understand when you feel like when you find out the truth, the big truth, you feel like you're really, really stupid, you know, and that that's, that's fine. I felt that too, you know, and you need a lot of time to relax. You need a lot of time to be nice to yourself. You need a lot of time to heal yourself and then you need a lot of time to recover from this damage, right? And then after you feel, that's a step number one. That's the most important thing. Then after you recover enough, just channel anger to practical thing. How can you make it better? Yeah, and hang out with people that, that you feel good hanging out with. Don't hang out with people that want to keep the dialogue of revenge going or, or anger or hatred and, you know, hang out with people that are talking about good stuff, hunt the good stuff. Yeah, because there are so many people, they think about, okay, uh, this happened. And some people, you call those people, they don't have emotions, you know, but those people, they can think about stuff more realistic, practical manner. Instead of being so emotional about it, these are people, they're going to say, okay, what can we do better this time? Okay, we got huh. information. This is all bad. And you how, you how can't change it anyway. Better? Yeah, you can't, you can't change it anyway. So let's move forward and, and make it different. Set yeah. boundaries. Um, hang out with people that you feel comfortable with. Um, be a source of comfort instead of a source of anger you know we have personal responsibility here so um you know you can't have it both ways you can't be a victim and a person of personal power you just can't it's not possible and so you know long time ago I slipped out of that whole victim role um and I have to say I I would uh wish it had happened sooner in my life but, you know, better late than never. Yeah. And um, I, I just don't think anybody's ruling over me. Yes, I have to follow society's rules. And I have to, you know, there's certain things I have to do just because that's the way uh, the society is that I live in. And then there are some ways that you can um, peacefully protest uh, things that you're being asked to do or pushed to do or coerced to do. Um, there's other decisions you can make as well. You don't have to be the victim. You can step away and say, yeah, oh, not doing it your way. I'm going to do something else. Um, so these are all personal decisions we have to make. How do we live with ourselves in this life, given what we know now, and what will be revealed even more? Um, which way do you want it? Do you want to be um, personally powerful and go after that, that, joy that you're looking for in your life that safety or do you want to be the eternal victim and just be mad at everybody all the time for me that's an easy choice yeah I can't be mad all the time I mean first of all you're going to cause disease in your body because people that are mad all the time I mean that energy is terrible for you so yeah it's gonna switch your DNA to have a lot of hereditary disease for sure so that's mm. not a good idea. Even though we're not doctors, but when we look at the energy field of a client, you know, we can kind of tell the switch is on. 
that's not good mm-hmm. you know in a yeah. point of view so um you know we all want happiness for ourselves so the choice is obvious but to get there you know some people say oh you know eric and su can say all this kind of stuff because whatever right um but we we're not we, living in reality <laughs> yeah but we we worked on ourselves we digested our emotions we had like so many years ahead of you guys we we found out the truth long time ago so we had a little more advantage than many of you guys right so oh we, and i can extol the virtues of just bitching and bitching and bitching about it until you get tired of hearing your own voice i mean that was great therapy for me and and luckily i had someone who who i trust and trust me and we have a good relationship that i can do that with so i mean if, if just you know talking about things over and over and over again until they no longer have that charge you know there's nothing wrong with that um as long as you're not hurting somebody else and and you have the willing ear and maybe they want to bitch about it too you know like you start a support group yeah don't for how ang- don't angry don't citizens don't. who have just woken up you know just realize the truth it's like have a bitch session fine that's good doesn't mean you're continuing to be a victim you're just getting your feelings out mm-hmm. yeah you and i have done it right yeah you gotta admit yeah. it you and i have done some complaining um to each other and and we're basically on the same page or if we're not we're really close and uh sometimes it feels just good to get it out yeah and then after we've done it a while we feel better about you know purging and then we start laughing about silly stuff and it's like all of that just dissipated and that energy dispersed right yeah because at the end of the day we just go back to basic like okay how can we make our lives better right yeah yeah so um that's everybody's goal after you go through all these feelings and then channeling anger to something positive eventually so you know how can you make your life better it's always go back to very simple path mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so that's what um my suggestion and do you have any suggestion before we close yeah just the last uh thought is, that's coming to mind is um just remember to treat people how you want to be treated because you're oh, yeah. going to create you're going to create a energetic field that's going to bring more of that to you Mm -hmm. so that's my personal empowerment tip mm -hmm. that makes sense and also uh it's really everything is duality you you know all this seems like a very shitty experience they do have a positive part too even the positive part is only 10 percent and the 90 is like horrible right these are Mm. always positive so after you calm down yourself, after you feel more peace, after you digested all feelings, uh, try to see what positive came out of all this. And then you could be the part of this positive force of new change, right? How, how do we want to structure new systems together? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that that can look like so many different things that could be, like, you know, maybe someone who's retired um, from, you know, their work, like, but now all of a sudden they want to be uh, a, a good influence uh, in the political arena. So you run and, you know, you run for office, whether it be local or state or uh, federal, or maybe um, you want to start a food co-op because, you know, you grow, grow some great veg in your yard, but you, you grow more than you could ever use. And well, this guy over there is growing pumpkins and I got tomatoes and lettuce, you know, maybe we could do a swap. So you do a co-op, whatever it looks like, or maybe you start an art class, you know, free art class or something and people come together and they just have nice stress reliefs because they're learning new techniques. I mean, whatever that looks like for you, um those are some ways that you can actually take action to create the kind of world you want to live in yeah and also you know just 
you don't have to be somebody who got backed up by huge agencies. You can um, provide your talent, singing, you know, art, acting, or whatever. Sure. Uh, to give community, you know, your talent, the community level. You know, we don't have to be on the movies. Maybe right. By by then, maybe a lot of people will be sick of the look, looking at the movie. <laughs> You know, you know, I know this lady, I, I went to high school with her and um, for the school district that uh, we went to, she still lives there or works there anyway. And um, she just got tired uh, of seeing kids that she knew weren't getting enough food to eat um, going home, especially when the kids would have a break from school. That was like a several day, like long weekend or a week off for Easter that she, she worried about these kids, you know, like what's going to, I know they're eating in school because New York has a law that, you know, they have to provide lunch and breakfast and lunch for the kids, but then, you know, what about dinner and what about when they're not in school? So she started this whole program. Um, it's a, the volunteer thing where, um, you know, backpacks, socks, underwear, all kinds of stuff is donated. And um, she gathers this st- and food items, of course. And she gathers this because st- she knows these kids. She's taken the time to get to know them and kind of what their situation is. So she sets up these backpacks and sends them with the kids um, when there's a break or at the beginning of a school. She does this mass um uh, appeal to the community for school supplies and uh, like sneakers, socks, you know, basic things that you don't imagine you would go without or your kids would go without, but there are kids that really don't have those things. So, I mean, she's turned it from, uh, you know, a, a small back closet operation to, you know, the school has dedicated a good section of uh, really, you know, classroom real estate for her to to manage this situation and uh it's, it's just beautiful to see so i mean that's that's the impact one person can have on a community um so don't think small either i mean if you have an idea um i mean maybe it starts small you, you know that's how we do things we 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 start with the step <laughs> we're on and then we take the next step and then the next step but uh let your imagination go. I'm, I'm sure that, uh, you know, if you really are meaning to, uh, to help your community, you can come up with something, some idea. Yeah, that's how we can all channel our anger after we dissolve all this. So that's our suggestion. And yeah. me and Sue will bring more interesting topic next week. Thank you so much for watching. Please share, like, subscribe, and then we see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you.